Medical Society. And although the society has been closed for the last several months, they have not been sitting on their laurels. They've been doing some great projects inside the walls of the History Center, sometimes on the roof of the historic of the History Center. And uh, they've got some exciting things that are coming up. So let's give a, a big Kiwanis welcome to Jessica Potter. Thank you. A little different than being with you guys um, down at the City Center Hotel, but uh, this is pretty fun. Thank you for inviting me today. I appreciate it. Um, I know what it's like after um, I get up and talk after lunch. You all are kind of zoning out a little bit, so I brought pictures. That way you won't have to look at my face. You can look at the pictures. So let's see if I can. I can share my screen. Awesome. So I just put together a little slideshow to give you an idea of what's going on at the History Center. Um, for those of you that are not as uh, aware of the Historical Society, um, here's a little introduction to who we are. Um, we are the organization dedicated to preserving the and sharing the history of Blue Earth County. And, um, so there's just a little bit about us and then um, a little bit about me. Um, I am the director of the Historical Society. I've been with the organization since 2001. Anybody trying to do math? I started when I was 12. Um, otherwise, don't do the math. Um, and here's my contact information. I'll have it at the end as well. But um, just wanted to throw that in there. So there was a little conversation about the flu. Um, and so I want to point out to you guys this little, um, this little, little bit of information. And uh, this was a, an ad. Um, it could be an ad that is running right now, but it's actually an ad that dates back to 1918. So this um, is, you know, idea, the things to do um, to keep away from sick people, especially if they cough or sneeze, use your handkerchief, uh, we know it now to use our arm, our elbows, avoid crowded streetcars. That's really important. Uh, trains and houses don't spit on the floor. Um, if you if you have a, a tendency to spit on the floor, please, this is not the time. Um, wash your hands before you eat. Keep your fingers out of your mouth and avoid common drinking cups um, and keep out of dusty places. So uh, this is actually from 1918. We laugh at some of the, the comments because we, we wouldn't uh, think of doing some of those things, but drink, common drinking cups is obviously our drinking fountains, which have been uh, kind of banned at this point. So I wanted to be able to show you guys that parallel um, between 1918 and today. Um, there's a lot of controversy and I'm not here to cause controversy. I'm here just to reflect on the past and so this is something that our country, our world has gone through and we made it through as a unified body. And so I'm hoping um, from his, that we can learn from our past as we move into the present and the future and realize that um, there have been people who have walk, already walked this path. And now is our turn to, um, to try to walk it as well. So how we are doing that at the Blue Earth County Historical Society is we have um, put together a, uh, a little way for people to share their story, to share their COVID-19 story. It is on our website. Um, this is definitely a very historic time in our country, in our world, in Blue Earth County. And so this is the, the moment we've got to capture. Um, it would be capturing different advertisements, like what is there, capturing photographs, whatever um, we think of that really tells the next generation what it was like to live through 2020. And so um, if you're interested in sharing your story or you've um, collected different things, um, you've taken photographs of storefront windows or, or house windows with all the displays of the hearts, um, anything that you wanna share with the Historical Society, we would love to have that as part of our little time capsule we're creating about this moment in history. So during this moment in history, as you can probably imagine, um, the Blue Earth County Historical Society has actually been closed since um, March uh, when the executive orders went into place. Um, the History Center closed at that point. We have not reopened to the public as of yet. And so because we were closed, we decided that, well, why not take on a construction project? 
So very much like Camp Patterson went into construction mode this year without any um, kiddos out there. We also went into construction mode here at the History Center knowing that we were not going to be able to accommodate the general public. And so we did a campaign to remove asbestos. And um, asbestos is not the bestest. And I can say that uh, wholeheartedly, this has been a challenging project for our organization. Um, if you're not familiar with our facility, we are located on the corners of uh, Cherry, Fifth, and Warren Street. This is our Warren Street entrance. This is the History Center. So when you enter that door, you enter into the main level of the um, History Center. And the main, whole main level is what we did asbestos abatement project in. Um, and so I'm going to give you guys some sneak preview pictures because we are still not open to the public. We are still under construction. Um, the project was asbestos abatement and then doing some upgrades in different areas. Well, the asbestos abatement, um, the asbestos company um, decided that containment was not a big concern. So we actually had to have a second abatement company come in and clean after the first one. So um, like everything in 2020, it has gone sideways and so did our construction project. So that has delayed us significantly. But when it's all said and done, it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth the wait. Um, so here's some before and after pictures. All of the before pictures are on the left and the after pictures are on the right, or I should say the in progress pictures. The big thing to see here is the asbestos abatement was on the ceiling. And so that's the, um, that white kind of bumpy look um, was all removed. And we now have a drop ceiling that has been installed with new LED lighting. And um, we're also upgrading all of our paint. So this is the reception area when you first walk in. Um, and then this is another little common space if you've been in our facility. Because of the abatement, uh, not so great containment, uh, we, do, we did have to pull up all of our carpet, which wasn't a lot, but this is an area that will be getting new carpet, um, as well as you can see the, the little splashes of color that have been added to the space. This is our temporary exhibit space. And um, again, this will have brand new carpet. You can see the drop ceiling and new lighting and the new little um, splash of color. The first exhibit that we plan to hold in this brand new space is an exhibit called We Are Water and it is brought to us by the Minnesota Humanities Commission. It will be on display starting October, I think it's 22nd. Um, and so fingers crossed, toes crossed, knees crossed, uh, COVID numbers are still, <laughs> are at a good place where we can safely open to the public after construction is complete. And then this is one of our meeting rooms. Um, we have two meeting rooms that are open to the public. Um, open to clubs like Kiwanis, the Art History Club meets here on a regular basis uh, in normal circumstances. So this meeting room, um, you can see the drop ceiling and lighting and a splash of color on the walls there. Um, we are also upgrading all of the technology in our meeting room spaces. So each room will um, have the capabilities of doing more teleconferencing, which is obviously where our world is right now. So for some that can have a virtual um, and a in-person and we'll just call do hybrid because that's what everybody's doing right now. Um, and this is our other meeting room. This room has seen the biggest transformation. This building was the Newman Center when it was lower campus um, for MSU. And this was the alt or this was the chapel. And we have transformed this room to uh, really put it back the way that it was so that you can see all of the original architectural details, including the original altar. And so this room is being transformed um, as well. Again, new technology going into the space and all of the drop ceiling and pops of color and all that good stuff. So those are a little bit of a sneak preview of what is to come. So we want you guys to stay close to watching for that. And um, there's lots of ways that you can be part of it um, if you are interested. And you just have to, I'll talk about that more in a second. So one of the big things that the Historical Society does besides having our, our physical space, the museum and our traveling exhibits, we do a lot of programming. 
Um, and with COVID-19, we obviously, like everybody, have had to pivot into our programming and the way that we present history and make it available. So um, we have really moved online with a lot of our different opportunities. A lot is happening on our Facebook page and on our website, and I wanted to just show you a few things that are going on right now. So um, if you like trivia, like um, our dear friend John has presented today, um, we do a trivia every Thursday. And so you can participate in Blue Earth County Trivia. Um, it, there, there's no, I suppose there's bragging rights, just like there was today. Um, but it's a great way to learn a little bit more about our own um, hometowns. And then we have this great program called History in a Minute, and um, there's a little, literally a little movie that's put together about some historical topic or place in Blue Earth County. And that also shows up on our Facebook page on a weekly basis. You can check that out. And then um, the Hubbard House uh, is a, what also our property, and that did not open this year due to COVID and the restrictions of uh, trying to give tours in a historic house museum. Um, and so that facility is also closed, but we have been doing weekly virtual tours of the Hubbard House. And you can find that on our Facebook page or on the Hubbard House's Facebook page. And I do need to say anything on Facebook on a public page like ours, you do not have to have your own Facebook account. You can access them without having to have that. A lot of people have concerns about Facebook. These are public pages, so you can um, go to them and look at them without having your own account. And then this is my favorite new feature on our website. We have worked with the Bend of the River Photography Club for a number of years, and we have done these then and now photographs. And um, we have been able to take those on our website and turn them into a slider, which gives you the opportunity to see the then and now. So this is on our website. Um, there's been, oh gosh, I think there's been at least a dozen images that have already gone out um, this year. And so I highly encourage people to go ahead and check that out. Oh, and then here's where you can do it all, right here at BlueEarthCountyHistory.com. Some great stuff. And then because of our programming has had to really move, um, we have moved our programs to online via Zoom. And we have this series called History at Home with Blue Earth County Historical Society. And we bring a different program, a different um, topic to your home computer, wherever you might be, every Thursday at 4 p.m. If you are a member of the Blue Earth County Historical Society, it's a free as part of your membership. If you're not a member, it is a $7 admission to join the program. It, they're recorded, so even if you can't attend at four o'clock, you can still take advantage of the program um, in the recording. But a great way to learn a little bit more about local history. Um, this week, we are featuring Minneapolis State Park naturalist Scott Kudelka. He'll be talking about Ameri the American bison. And then on September 24th, it's the Charlie McCarthy story by Larry Cordum. And this is a very interesting story about research as well as um, uh, burials and, uh, and uh, moving graves. And it, it has a very interesting story. That's all I can say. Um, so check those two out. You can go onto our website at um, blueearthcountyhistory.com events and you can find out more descriptions and how to register. So let's see, there we go. So other upcoming events that we have, Ghost from the Past, which um, is a, a standard event that we've been doing for over 30 years. Um, this year we have to go virtual um, and it will be a cemetery tour of Calvary Cemetery on October 8th. And again, this will be recorded. So you'll have an opportunity to participate live on October 8th, or you'll be able to watch the recording after for about a week and a half. So check that out, save the date for that. And then also our annual fundraiser, which we typically hold in the spring, we um, are doing a save the date for November 7th. We are going to do our virtual a night at the speakeasy. Um, so check that out, mark your calendars. 
And um, back to just reminding everybody that this, this uh, making history and keep making history, all of that is done as a collaborative community effort. And so these are some different ways that as a community, we can together keep making history. Um, encourage you to become a member of the Blue Earth County Historical Society if you aren't already. Attend one of our programs, consider a donation as a nonprofit organization. We depend on membership dues and donations. Share your COVID-19 story and um, also shop local, buy a gift card, support local businesses and nonprofits. Um, this is the time where we really need to come together and support our community. And again, here is my contact information and feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. Um, I work at a lot of different places, either here or at home or in the midst of construction. So um, feel free to reach out if you have questions or you need additional information. So I will stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to if there's any questions or um, yeah. Say, say Jessica, Mike yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, say I'm just going to put in a plug because uh, the membership is a low, low cost. Can you tell us the costs and the benefits that come with becoming a member of the Blue Earth County Historical Society? Yeah, thanks very much. You can find out information about our membership on our website. Super easy to get to and you can actually do your membership right online. Um, but for a household, your membership is um, just around $50. And so that <laughs> That's the question in this COVID world. What do you get with that? Um, typically, you get a, um, a year-round admission to the museum, the research center, and the Hubbard House. Um, you get our quarterly newsletter, a discount in our store. A lot of these things we have transformed or translated over to virtual as well. So your membership discount applies to online store sales, a lot of um, free admissions to programs. Um, and um, just, it's a great way to support the organization. It's not a, um, it's not an exclusive club. So I think membership, people think that they're exclusive. Um, it is just a great way to uh, financially support the organization and you get our great quarterly newsletter that has a lot of wonderful historical information in it. So lots of different membership levels for, um, there's the senior individual, senior household, household, individual, lots of different levels. Um, so you can check that out at our website as well. Other questions for Jessica? Jessica, um, Sharon Taylor here. I'm wondering uh, if you're planning on um, any future cemetery tours at Glenwood again. Um, it's been quite a few years, I think, since you've done one here. And they are really uh, surprisingly fun. Yeah, I would agree. And we actually, Glenwood was at the top of our list. And I think the Boy in Blue project is also, is going to be doing something with Glenwood Cemetery again this fall, but it's focused on Civil War veterans. And so we didn't want to step on their toes, which is why we chose to um, check out Calvary Cemetery for this round. But yes, I agree. Glenwood Cemetery has a ton of uh, historical figures that are buried there. So I hope we can do a Glenwood Cemetery tour soon as well. Thank you. Right. Jessica, this is Jim. Um, I recently read a book uh, by Eric Larson called The Splendid and the Vile. It was about mm. Hitler and, and uh, Churchill Ooh. during the Second World War. And I learned in that book that Great Britain actually hired typists to type up the history of the war as it happened. And I noted that you are looking for people to write up stories about their COVID-19 experiences. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that's going? You know, it's going kind of slow because I think um, in general, I'm making a very general statement here. I think people look at history as being something that was 50 years old and they, they forget that history is what's happening right now. And so a lot of people don't necessarily think the value of documenting their story right now. And so it's a little bit of a mind shift to get people to engage in that way. Um, but we're, we're doing our best by making sure, I mean, the, the thing that we do and we always have done 
is we clip the local newspapers and pull out all of the, um, the, the any articles or about people, about places, events, and we have a vertical files, which are, I think there's about a dozen filing cabinets filled with newspaper clippings. So we're very much chronicling how the news is, how our local news is reporting right now. Um, so we're keeping up with it that way. We're also, um, as a staff, we're paying attention to what is happening in the community, trying to get out and take photographs, trying to create some little, um, I keep calling this a time capsule, little moments that just kind of pile all together. I, I think as once we come out of this, I think that will be that time where people can reflect back and say, oh, I don't have to wear this mask anymore. Oh, well, if I don't have to wear it, instead of throwing it away, maybe I should give it to the historical society. Or here's the yard sign from my son's graduation from high school that had to be virtual. What am I going to do with it? Oh, instead of throwing it, I'll give it to the historical society. So I think, I, I think because we're such in the middle of it right now, it's hard for people to reflect about what should be kept. Um, but I do know that uh, to kind of segue a little bit, there are many, um, many of our, our conflicts throughout history that were being recorded um, as it was happening. And, and that is a significant piece of, for historians to be able to go back and understand, but also um, our media sources were and are, um, if they I don't mean to sound wrong, but if they can stay unbiased, will also give us those documented moment by moment what is happening. And those are great resources for historians. Any other questions? Jessica, oh, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to quickly ask Jessica if there were any legal entanglements around the asbestos removal. From what you said, I thought there might have been. Yes, um, so we do, um, there is an insurance um, claim on the project. So um, hopefully um, many of the added expenses will actually be covered by the insurance claim. That is still, uh, you know, how insurance works. So it's, uh, it, <laughs> we're just waiting. But obviously we're gonna keep moving forward with our construction. It's been, uh, it's been a very interesting summer, but I will be very, happy when the project is done and I can have smiling masked faces back in my building. <laughs> right. Somebody else have a question? If not, thank you, Jessica. We appreciate you as always coming to our club. You always do a wonderful job. Thank you very much. And thank you. Good luck with the completion of your construction. I do want to uh, point something out here. Um, Someone said in the chat box that Minnesota Lake actually is not in Blue Earth County. So I looked it up and as you can see here, Minnesota Lake is a city in Blue Earth and Faribault counties. So that person who said that would be correct because the majority uh, of the city is actually in Faribault County. Only a small part extends into Blue Earth. So Jamil, if you said uh, that Minnesota Lake was not in Blue Earth, you might have wrecked your perfect score because a large part of it is in Faribault County. I don't know who said that, but thank you for correcting me. It's like I said, I don't know how I got something off the internet that was wrong. I just didn't think that was possible, but. Sorry, John, that, that was the Blue Earth County history geek that pointed oh, that, that out. You. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, thanks, sorry. Thanks for setting us straight, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I uh, want to uh, remind everyone September 19th, this Saturday, 9 a.m., if you got some time, head down to the park and help uh, get some Kiwanis holiday lights ready. I wanna uh, uh, also congratulate Matt and Emma on their anniversary and thank uh, uh, Hayden Ziegler for attending our meeting today, along with Emma and Liz from Circle K and Jennifer out there with Liz at BW3s. Remember to go to BW3s, 15% of your check will go to the Boy Scouts today. So let's support Liz and the rest of the Scouts there also. With that, we're going to go to one Kiwanis call. Take it away. Here we go. One, two, three. One Kiwanis calls. One Kiwanis calls. Let everyone stand up. Stand up. One Kiwanis calls. One Kiwanis calls. Let each one raise their cup. 
Look up and look at the table. As long as we are able, we pledge to be our loyalty. When we won this call. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for being on the call today. We appreciate it. Next week, we have Bethany College. Um, right, Mike? Bethany College? Yes, Bruce Gratz from the, the University Advancement Office. All right, the University Advancement Office from Bethany next week. See you, everybody. Have a great week. Goodbye.